Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 822. And if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 822, click on the link below the video. In this video, this is 822. We want to relate what we did back in 821, the last uh, Magic Trick. Here we had four criteria, and we had to do a four uh, a lookup with four criteria and return the value. So we had one match here. But in this example, there were no duplicates which meant we could only find one record to match that four criteria. So in this video, we want to see what happens if we have um, more than one record that matches, which means we want to return multiple items. So for this set of criteria here, if I look through the data set, I have this. So I need to return that 147 and this, 169. So I actually am looking something up and to need to return multiple items. As soon as you're in that situation, Regardless, regardless if you're looking up one thing or four things, you have to switch over to an array formula to extract multiple items. The ultimate problem is if we said did some sort of lookup function and said, and there's duplicates, right? When if it runs into a duplicate, it's only going to take the first one, right? So we somehow need to tell our formula to find whatever row this is and whatever row this is. But in succession, when we copy the formula over to the side, it needs to go get the first matching record, the second matching record, the third matching record. Now, this is just a little data, teeny data set, right? There's only th three or matches or so, but you can imagine copying this over to the side and then extract as many as you want. Now, here's the deal. If you have just a single four set of criteria, then the form, we can use the helper column. And both the formula here and the helper column will be much easier than if we have many records to extract. So here I want to try and extract three. All right, so let's say we just have four set of criteria. I'm going to do a helper column. I just want an indicator whenever it finds one of the, the yellow ones to put a one and then a two here. So I'm going to say equals and, because I have four set of criteria, I'm going to say anytime that's equal to this, F4, and then this equal to this, F4, this equal to this, F4, and finally this equal to this. Anytime it sees all four logical tests equal true, then AND will deliver true. Let's just see what this works. This is what we did last video, right? All right, so we have a true and a true. The fact that there's two trues, that means they're duplicates. We'd still have to do some array formula, but no problem. I'm simply going to use the sum function. I'm going to say add that, which is false. Later, it'll be true, which is 1 false is 0. That's the first number in the sum function, comma, and the second number is that column header. The sum function can ignore text. So right now it'll be 0 plus text is 0. But as I copy it down, when it gets down to here, it's adding 0 plus the true. And when it gets to here, it's adding, all of these are falses, so it's adding um, the, the false plus the one from above, that's why we get duplicates. Here, it's adding the one plus the new true, and it gets two. The cool thing here is now we can just do a straight lookup and do exact match, and it will only see the first number one and the first number two. So I'm going to come up here and do equals V lookup. And I need a number incrementer, so I'm going to use columns. Columns, and I'm sitting in E2, so dollar sign E2, lock the the uh, column reference, E2. That increments 1, 2, 3 as we copy our formula to the side, comma. Notice that's the lookup value, because this will be our first column. So then here is the lookup table. I'm just going to look up this. I could have done that with a keyboard shortcut faster. F4 to lock it, comma. The column index, it's always going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then comma, and the lookup value right there, I mean, the, the range lookup, that's what kind of lookup, and we want exact. That's the part of the lookup that can deal with the duplicates and only take the first one. So I'm going to put 0. These, all these little screen tips are getting in the way, and then close parentheses. Control Enter, and I copy to the side. Now, I could copy this way over, and I get lots of NAs, but then um, to, to get rid of those. And if you had one record, you could just stop right there. But certainly in 2007 and 10, there's this awesome new function, if error. So it looks at that VLOOKUP. That's the value, comma. And if it's an error, you got to tell it 
what to put in the cell. So double quote, double quote for blank. Over here on this sheet, if you uh, download this, there's the formula for 2003 or earlier. And then I have a parallel formula for the one we're going to do here. All right, so now we need to build a lookup formula here that will look up the criteria and extract the records this way. But when we copy down, it needs to look at the new set of criteria. I'm going to start right off with the index function. The index function can take an array, and the things we're returning come from the sales column. So I'm going to control shift down arrow and F4, comma. Now all we need is a row number. Now if I could do this visually, right, uh, it looks like that's row 10 and then 13. So when I copy the formula this way, I need a 10 in the E column. But when I go over to the F, I need a 13. So normally in this situation, and if you watch my videos, you've seen a lot of extract videos. I use the small function, because the small can take a, uh, an array of row numbers, like 10 and 13. And as we copy the formula to the side, the small could take the small function could take the first smallest, the second smallest, etc. So it would take 10 and then 13. But I'm not going to use the small. I'm going to use the aggregate. Aggregate is a function in 2010 that has the ability to handle arrays without using Control Shift Enter. Now, if you want to see the, we'll do this. The, the logic of the arrays will be the same. If you're in 2007 or 3, you come over to this sheet, and I have the, the, the small function example. But aggregate is great because it has a small right there. Comma, that's the first argument is which function, comma. The second one is options. And since we're going to have some divide by zero errors, I'm going to say ignore errors. Comma, and then here's the array. Now inside the small function, you usually say if, and then you throw your criteria, and then you say if this criteria is met, then look at all the rows. Well, here in the aggregate function, you build your rows, the row numbers first, and then divide it by the criteria. So in parentheses, I'm going to say row. And I'm just going to pick uh, this right here, F4, because it's the same parallel size. Now that'll give me 10, 11, 12, and that's not what I want. Index needs 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to say minus row of this. That gives me a 10 minus 10, which is 0. I don't want that, so I add 1. Now, this is always ro robust. Uh, and this is robust because if you insert columns and stuff like that, it will update. Right now, it'll give me, if I hit F9, it'll give me all the row numbers in that data set 1 to, to 20. Control Z. Control Z. Now, I'm going to have to put this in parentheses, right, for the array because there's some minuses here in division. See here, it gives me all the row numbers. We just saw that when I evaluated it. But we need to divide by some trues and falses. All the falses will be divided by zero errors. The trues will give me whatever the row number is divided by 1, which is that row number. So in parentheses, now this is where I build our criteria. And here's the trick. In fact, I'm going to click at the beginning of the cell and hit space to suspend that. And then come and remind us what we did over in uh, the last video, 8. 21. Oh yeah, we used match, and we ma mashed up all of the criteria, and then mashed up all of the columns. One, two, three, four columns became one. Anytime you mash up or join columns of data with the same size with ampersands, you go from however many columns to a single column. So that's what I'm going to do over here. Same exact trick, except for now it it's going to give us our trues and falses. So you ready? Now remember, this formula has to copy over this way and then down. So all of this criteria has to be locked when we copy it this way, but not when we go down. So watch this. I'm going to say criteria 1, and then F4 three times to lock the letter, which is the column reference. And the next one, F4 three times, lock the column, but not the row. See that 5, when we copy the formula down, the dance and dance will move down to the next one. Ampersand. F4, ampersand, and then F4 three times. Any time that criteria is equal to, and here's our columns mashed together. Control Shift down arrow F4, ampersand, Control Shift down arrow F4, ampersand, Control Shift down arrow F4, ampersand, Control Shift down arrow F4. All right, so now we have 
this F9, that gives me from four columns to a single column. You can see semicolons is the array syntax for a single column. So we went from four columns to one. I'm going to Control Z. And then this little piece right here, F9. Oh, that gives me the single thing from four cells, Control Z. And if I do zap them all with the F9 key, that's the evaluate key, I can see, oh, there's going to be my true and true. So that should be 10 and 13. So all the row, row numbers above, the only ones that will show up are 10 and 13. I'm going to Control Z on that. I have to close parentheses, right? Uh, division is done way before ampersand in the order of operations, Excel's order of operations. Now watch this. I can highlight this entire array here. This, that's what's so cool about this function. The, the last uh, 14 or so functions in aggregate uh, from that are arrays and can handle arrays without Control Shift Enter. But let's hit F9. And there it is. There's my divide by except for the 10 and the 13. Control Z. Now if you're using 2000 and uh, 7 or 3, you'd have to put if this inside of the if, and then the rows second in uh, value of true, and that if would have to be inside of the small function. But check this out. This is the aggregate, right? That 15 right there says do small. So when I come comma, there's that same K we see in the small. And this is going to be, I'm in E5, so I'm going to use columns. Just like we saw up here, it's our number incrementer. So I'm going to go dollar sign E5, colon E5, right? And so there's our K right there. Close parentheses on the aggregate. There's our row number. Remember, aggregate is simply doing what? F9. It's only delivering a row number, Control Z. All right, so there's our row number, close parentheses. I'm not going to Control Shift Enter. I'm just going to. Uh, Control Enter, copy it over. We get our num errors. Now, if we're in 2010, we simply use the if error. And we say if error, whenever that's an error, that thing right there, comma, double quote. So I can copy this over and down. right? And so it extracts. So that's if you have, so we have four criteria. Up here, we had four criteria, but we were extracting just one record. Here, we have four criteria, but we need to extract multiple items for multiple records, right? And the 2010 aggregate function is great. Many people still don't have it. So if you come over to 8-22-2003, uh, this is not really a, yeah, this is a 2003. Let me blow this up. Right, and so we have the inside the index, we have small and then if, and there's the mashed up. So the mashed up comes, uh, the criteria and columns mashed up comes first. That's the logical test. And then the value of true is our row numbers. And then inside the small, there's our same little k. And this requires Control Shift Enter, but it does the same thing. All right, uh, that is some fun with. Uh, four criteria lookup when you have duplicates and you want to return multiple items. See you next trick.